So this is Mindy and this is Tessa. Hi. Um, Mindy's uh, family is uh, Wayne. My dad's Wayne looking back. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is my daughter. This is our granddaughter. Good. Hello. Good. Hello. Welcome. I absolutely Hello. love your mother. She's such a sweet. <laughs> <laughs> she has little breaks right now, so I have a little free day. Yeah. Ran this way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, who are who are um, you, ladies? Oh, well, I'm gonna start on Zoom and then you're Do I start now? Mm -hmm. Is it on my own? Oh yeah, you're oh, being oh, recorded. Okay. My name is Loretta Badhartbow. I am originally from the Porcupine District here in North Dakota, and uh, uh, married to an Ogallala. And over the years, I've learned how to do a, a number of things that we're going to show you tonight. Um, this is my assistant, Della Nohart. And Della's originally from Milwaukee, and we have been doing this. I've been doing this for several years, and she got me started going to the schools to do two years to show the, the children, the elementary school children. So that's been a, another piece of, of what I do, and I enjoy doing this. And oftentimes, people will ask me to make plus not for certain ceremonies, and I will I will do that for them. And I when you when you get into this and you start uh, using this for cultural activities, you make sure you have everything on hand because you can't go to Walmart and buy it. So um, what I learned early on was I learned I needed to have uh, dried meat on hand, I needed to have Indian corn on hand, and I needed to have choke cherries on hand. And then I learned how to make um, timsila was not with uh, timsila. Um, but um, I'm not gonna do that tonight. That takes a little extra time. So what tonight we're gonna do is <clears throat> show, show you how to do this, but first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how I got into this was my husband started sun dancing, and uh, when you when you sun dance, they ask you to do many things, to be able to, you learn how to sew, make uh, those, those wraps for your man, and uh, how to make all these different, do all these different things, so part of that was learning how to make Wesna, but because he had to go to Hungarcha, and so one of the things they asked me to do was make that, but the very first time I was asked to bring Wasna was to a, a naming. And uh, my youngest son was getting a name. And so the, the spiritual leader who asked for it asked for um, uh, Wasna. And so I told my husband, I said, gosh, I don't know how to make Wasna. He said, I'll ask Auntie Susan. So he, she brought it for him when we came up here to North Dakota to have him named the whole porcupine. And when he got named and we served this and I had people coming up to me and say, oh, you made the best was not. I said, well, I didn't make it, but it was made by the antelope. And so um, that's how I, that's how I found out that antelope was a really good um, meat, dried meat to use for us now. But so of course it's buffalo and, and even beef, you know, sometimes you can't get any of those, uh, the wild meat. So sometimes you use beef, you know, you just whatever's on hand. And so as we went along, I learned that one of the things that people did, I said to them, so was what's not just used for like ceremonies and things? And I said, no, they used it to, to eat, you know, to, uh, Tom said his mother would make a corn one stuff for him to snack on. And so, but she had to use uh, cornmeal because at that time they didn't have, they didn't have access to, to this corn. They didn't have the gardens and, uh, where, where he was at. So, so they use cornmeal, and so I tell people, if you can't get a hold of this corn, use cornmeal. I, the reason I don't use it, I like to stick to what we used before, because it's it hasn't been genetically modified. It's not sweet corn. It's not. It doesn't have all these other additives or uh, pesticides in it. So the corn I get is from people who have made, um, grown it right here. Um, so the, so uh, some people with porcupine, another um, lady at Cannonball. And this lady right here, I gave her a little snack bag full of these uh, corn seeds. And um, she's already got a, a, almost a gallon of mm -hmm. dried corn from last year. From last year. Pouring it. Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That is cool. From last year. And it's just that little, just that little bit I gave her. She's got all that. So she keeps that so she can she can make corn while stuff for everybody if they need it for ceremony or just to, even to give as a gift mm -hmm. for, for a birthday or for sometimes people want it for um, 
for like Thanksgiving or Christmas mm -hmm. or sometime a, a special gathering, for yeah, a reunion or something. People will want that uh, some uh, a spiritual food and like maybe even meat that Terry was not mixed together, you know, whatever. But, so I generally have try try to keep available whatever it is that people might want. And then generally they will give me something in return for that. <laughs> One lady needed some wasnan, so I took it to her house and she said, oh, I have something for you. And she had this great big plate of food. It was just wonderful food, so that was my gift. And it, it, just, it was just really wonderful. So um, when we do these things, we do this always with, with your, with your um, good heart, always feeling positive. Uh, it's... We don't want to go into it saying, "Oh gosh, I didn't want to do that for her," you know. And I, I got all these other things. Then don't do it. Don't do it because it's not going to be have good uh, energy in it. You want to mm -hmm. say prayer with it, and then <clears throat> when you say prayer with it, um, you know it's going to it's going to always be good, and the people that that take it in will also receive the benefit of your prayer. And so, whenever I'm making this, I also after I finish making it in t and, it, and it's the exact how I want it and the feel and the taste and all that. The first thing I do is I'll take a pinch of it and put it in the spirit plate. And then that, that spirit plate, and I'll put it aside and then I bag this up, or I put it in a container and then I'll take this out, put it out by my, in the backyard somewhere, somewhere where people don't walk. Like I have a tree way over in the corner and I just usually put it over there. And uh, because I know that you know, there's not, there, there's no activity over there. So <clears throat> always remember when you finish making something spirit, a uh, spiritual food like this, to put a little pinch of it over the spirit plate. And the other thing that I learned is when this is this is Philomene Lakota is the one that taught me this from Pine Ridge. She, um, you know, said that you know, when you use when you when you're going to serve this like at Sundance or for a ceremony, she said use use a wooden bowl, mm -hmm. use a wooden spoon. Don't use plastic or um, styrofoam or any of those things. Use something that we used a long time ago. So use, that's that's why I use to tell people to use these things because it comes from the natural world. Oh, we got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yes, I saw them right <laughs> zoom, zoomed in on them. So anyway, I want to share this with you. This is a, a bowl that was made by uh, Leonard Yellowhorse. And he lives in, in Rapid City. But this bowl, you know when you're uh, when you're Going down, down by the creek and all that, and you see these trees and they have a lump on them, like a oh, it looks like a tumor or something. Yeah. Big lump. Well, he'll slice that off, and then he'll clean it off and dig it out and make a bowl. Cool. He makes a bowl. Mm -hmm. So some of them are all different kinds of sizes and like that. Yeah, Isn't that the neat. coolest thing? So he's made all different size bowls. But if you think about it, we didn't have like plates and no, you know, no, we didn't no. We did so a lot of eating by our fingers. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I always show this bowl, and, and uh, but I have other smaller bowls, some bigger, depending on you know who you, how many you're going to feed. Mm -hmm. And how I learned, with particularly with corn was now, is that you know people will say, "Do you make corn balls?" And I never knew how, learned how to make corn balls. I did taste one, but I, I didn't. There was so much um, like lard in there that it was. I didn't really care for the taste. I know people have make theirs different ways, and, and I know that people at Fort Berthold, well, they make corn balls, but mm -hmm. I I'm never really or tried pemmican. Pemmican. So, huh? Or they make, or they call it pemmican. Oh, okay. pemmican. Yeah, that's a French word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> then I, I have a little tiny spoon. That little people give me stuff when they know because I know I do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a little tiny um, uh, wooden spoon that I use to to hand out when, at ceremonies or anything like that. But the other thing that people would always, sometimes I'll make a, a big batch and put it in a container and I'll give it to somebody as a gift. And a long time ago, I used to tell these young people they used a, like a, a buffalo cap or something to, to pack their, their, their food in to eat on the way when they were traveling. They would use something like this or, or some kind of a, a parfleche container yep. to keep their food, but this kept it moist also. So that's why I would bring a buffalo one just to show people, and then some place they capped it with a with a um, leather, you know, tied it around. And then tied it around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then I wanted to show you this. This came from a buffalo horn. The spoon, the spoon, and I just go a little wider. But uh, I like to use the spoon once in a while for for uh, mostly for show. 
more for the show just because I I don't want to lose it or anything mm-hmm. happen to it. But I just like to, to show people so that some of the things that we had a long time ago where the people were so inventive. So <clears throat> um, if you ever want to look for bowls on the trees, <laughs> there you go. And now we know. Now we know. We'll be all looking for all the. <laughs> there the hey, there's a mom play. <laughs> the boy, his, his dad said, "I don't know why you told him that." Because now we have to go look. For I was just gonna say, <laughs> everyone's gonna take notice of the trees now. And we're back here, you're like. Then I have a lot of this corn. This is what our corn looks like, and so then I just. I just uh, take it off of, the, off of the ear so that I have it ready to, to go to go into the um, into the blender. Uh, it's easy to blend it because then you can make it real fine. Um, you want to make it real fine, especially for people who are elderly and they have if they have dentures. Sometimes those things get underneath there, so you want to make it real nice and fine to for them to eat. Mm-hmm. So we'll be making that, and um, when we do our uh, grind our cherries, I have some cherries to grind. Sometimes at home, what I do in the summer, if I don't have enough room in my freezer, I'll go ahead and uh, grind them, grind it, all those, those cherries like we're going to do. But I dry them and make little patties like this. So the patties, but you have to make sure they're really, really dry. And so Tom would make a, uh, um, a frame, a wood frame, and then he would put a, a sheet and he would go get a, a um, the queen size sheet, and then he would make it real tight all the way around. And then I put the, they'd be real wet. I put them on on that sheet, and put them in the garage, close the door, and I put a fan on them. And then in the evening, I flip them, and in the morning, I flip them. So after about three days, they were nice and nice and hard. You got to make sure they're nice and dry on the inside because if they're not, they're mold. If you, when you put them away, you can yeah. open it up, they're all green because yeah, they're they'll mold quick. Does it? I guess I've never. Um, we did a um, choke cherry patty making class, but of course the students took them home. So, and of course I didn't take any home. So I was just wondering like three days, but how soon, if it doesn't dry, how soon after does it mold? I guess my wonder is that. Uh, fairly quickly, um, okay. because you'll have them contained and probably in a container, but just try to, you know, it's such hard work that mm-hmm. you want to make sure that you do the, do it right the first time because otherwise you have this whole mess of moldy uh, choke cherry patties. And you're wasting a lot of food. <laughs> wasting a lot of food, yeah. <clears throat> so so I have those on hand just in case I need something real quick. But um, and it's ground real fine. So all I have to do is just add a, a little bit of moisture. I usually don't add um, um, lard or um, kidney fat to it because um, it's already moist. And if you're gonna use it right away, there's no set, but you don't need to make it moist with, with that. Now, um, the other thing is when you, they use for the lard a long time ago, they used kidney fat and or bone marrow. Bone marrow is like Indian butter. Mm-hmm. And so people would boil those bones and bring the marrow would come up to the top, you skim it off, and that's what you use to moisten your meat uh, on your, on your uh, corn. Mm-hmm. And, um, the other, the, the other thing is like with the kidney fat, I, I told uh, these ladies that I, they said, where do you get your kidney fat? And I said, well, now I have to go to usually Westside Mar- uh, Meats and Mortgage. Sometimes they'll have a, a, some kidney fat just by itself. And I was talking to these young ladies and I said, so you have to render it. I said, do you know what that means? No. So I said, well, rendering means they get this ball of kidney fat. So you put it in the pan. It's like cooking. Like when you cook bacon and it and that fat melts, then you skim off that that um, that liquid fat and then you put it in a container. I said that's what happens with kidney fat; the whole thing melts, and then you take that and you put it in a container and then it gets it solidified. So what do I do with that container? Remember that little wall? Oh, there it is over there with that lid. That little red lid. So what I would do is take that kidney fat and then I would freeze, put it different. I used to put it in a great big container. Well, I learned, uh, rather than take the whole container out and then have it melt, I started putting it in smaller containers because you don't need the whole thing. So then I use mm-hmm. these, and then that's usually enough for whatever it is that you make because it's, real, it's pretty thick. But it's real good. It's real good for you. And, um, um, but so is that bone marrow. And so 
some of these young people don't know what bone marrow is either. So I would bring bones and I'd show them the inside and then I'd boil, boil them up so that marrow would come to the top and they'd skim it off. So mm -hmm. they knew what that was and they first, they didn't really like the looks of it. And I think this, I said, taste it. I said, well, mix it in there and then you taste it and you tell me if it's bad. And they, they all liked it. So <clears throat> um, with kidney fat, I, that's what I do. I just make smaller containers of it because like I said, you don't have to keep melting it and melting it all the time. You know, it's this much. And if you have a little bit left over then, you know, you don't have to waste very much. Um, and then if, like with corn, with the corn, uh, when I grind it, and then we, we bake it. We'll bake it on this. I'm kind of jumping around. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to put it in this blender, and then we're going to get it real fine, and then we're going to put it in here dry. There's no grease, no nothing. And in that, uh, well, so then we'll turn the burner on and get it nice and hot. And then it will start to brown around the edge. And that's when you make sure that it's maybe on medium or, or medium high because you want to burn. Because once it burns, it doesn't taste good. And you, want, you don't want to serve it like that. You always want to serve the best because people will remember. And so what I do is I have this uh, corn. And before we go finish on that part, what I do is I have this corn grind ground, and I have a ground coarse, so the children can feel what coarse means when I'm grinding it coarse, and then I have it ground fine so that they can feel the, the grind that how we really want it. This is how you want it, so they know the difference. Because you can say, "Well, you can't have it coarse." Well, what does that mean? You know, for them, you almost have to you have to um, experience it. Like this. Yep. So then. When I have it ground nice and fine, put it in there and it'll start browning. Then you start moving it around, just keep moving it around so it gets all a brown. And it gets kind of a little light caramel color. And the kids say it, it smells like popcorn. Uh -huh, it smells like popcorn. <laughs> and <clears throat> so it's kind of a light brown. And then I put it in a bowl. And then, I, then I'll take a pan like this and I'll take the lard and I'll put it in here and melt it. And then I put it, pour it just a little bit over there and I mix it a little bit. And then to make sure that I don't put too much, you don't want it too oily, too wet. So you mix it up and then usually that corn will suck it up right away because it's real dry. And then you add a little bit more. And then <clears throat> when it's kind of like, it feels like it's kind of mm, moistened. Um, I don't know how else to say it, but it feels like it's, it's, this, it's all kind of got some moisture in it. Then you take it and you pull it like this push it together, and if it stays together, you got enough oil in it. Mm -hmm. You don't want it. Oh, okay. okay. So when it, when it, so that's why you don't use oil. Um, you know, instead you use the lard, because then it gets hard again. Yeah. You know, and it gets solid again, I guess. <clears throat> and so then when it gets solid, then it'll make the corn stick together a little bit better. So when you serve it, it's not just like real crummy. Yeah. yeah. So. And then once I add that, then uh, I taste it. Because sometimes the corn, depending on the year, if it's a real dry year or they haven't had much water or much, much sunshine or whatever, then the corn is just like it's like nothing. It does not have very much taste in it. And so I, I'll add a little bit of, I, I used to use sugar, but I don't, I'll use sugar here. But sometimes I'll, if it's a lot of others, I'll use one that I just add a little bit just to get a little bit of a taste. And, mm -hmm. uh, then I, put, then I put it in a container and I make sure I take a pinch, put it in my spirit plate. So they always get the first. They always get the first. And so you taste it and you, and when we do it here, well, I'll show you the way I like it, but you can do it to you know, make it the way you like it. It's however you want to present that to the people. You want to make sure that it's good. Mm -hmm. You don't want it burnt um, and make sure you have make enough. You don't want to run out. Or you can add craisins. You can add craisins. Mm -hmm. I uh, people often sometimes add uh, raisins. I for some reason I just had too many raisins overall in my life, so I don't think it could be good. <laughs> so I like raisins. So I, I don't know. I just I just like the taste of raisins. Mm -hmm. So I'll add those sometimes, and people like that. But for ceremony, I'll just probably just do it plain. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I'm gonna do it for a gift, I usually add raisins. There's a couple of people that like it for uh, like at Thanksgiving to give to their family or something. But, mm -hmm. 
I want people to learn so they can make it in their homes and they can make it. Somebody, we're getting to a place where we're coming back to life again as a people. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing a lot more ceremonies, even if it's a naming ceremony or a complejo or you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> and they always want me to make a, for a, a working with tears ceremony. So whatever it is, you know, we're, we're all becoming more involved and more proud, mm -hmm. I guess, of, of who we are and learning these kinds of things. I know I am. So, and what I tell people is when I, when I, when I'm, the way I'm going to teach you is you may have learned, somebody said, well, I did it this way. Well, if you want to do it that way, fine. You, you do it any way that works for you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you can't get this, this um, Indian corn, colored corn, um, you'll have to just go to the store and get um, cornmeal. And that's okay. You just do it. You just work with what you have. <clears throat> and but like I said, cornmeal, the reason I don't do it is because it's already been uh, processed and it's got preservatives. There's preservatives, preservatives in it now, just because it's it has to stay fresh, I guess, and that's what they do. So uh, with the meat, I have, let me see, oh, right up there is that um, white bag. So what the meat we're going to do today, I, uh, this is, I did this myself at home and the reason that I, I make it so small now is because it's like this, I make it like this and I cut, cut it up and this is deer. And uh, of course, I have a dehydrator, and dehydrators won't take in big pieces of meat. Not that I know how to do it that way, but gobble up, mm -hmm. gobble up. And um, there's a lady here who can teach you how to do that also. Yeah. Right? And that's why we have all these, all these strings hanging yeah. out because we're, these we're going, to, we're going to be another class to dry meat. Pop on turnips. Mm -hmm. Turnips. So, <clears throat> um, so then I have this ready. So I did uh, already because we don't have an oven here. I already baked it. And you guys will all receive a recipe for all of these things. And so I already baked the meat and it's uh, pliable again because once you bake it, it's like a cracker you know, because it's dried. And then, uh, so I soak it until it's like this so it's easy to pound and get, uh, you know, get it like this. And do like this. And we'll take all, you'll all taste it afterwards to, to see how what it tastes like. And this is what she puts up here. So this is what I pound with. I use a. This is what was shown to me. Now there were two people that showed me how to do this. One of them was Mary Strikes Plenty out of Kyle, South Dakota, mm -hmm. and the other one was Lorna Messe, uh, who was oil 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 culture teacher, uh, culture teacher. He showed me how to do this too. And <clears throat> so I use this and I pound, I, I line it with this. I get, get these from the grocery store. Sometimes they have different kinds of bottles and stuff in there. So I usually stack up on these so I have something ready whenever mm -hmm. somebody, if they want to pop up. So and then I line it with a, a plastic, a paper bag, excuse me. And then Tom got me this uh, hatchet so that First of all, when a bigger piece is sometimes if I buy meat from somebody else or somebody else gives me some, some of those pieces are big. So when you bake them, you chop them up so it'll get smaller before you start pounding them. Then you start Tom's a good them. gifter. <laughs> yeah. You got, a, you got a hatchet. <laughs> That's a it. true Lakota word. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm sure they use other things. Um, when, when, when a long time ago, this is what, this is when you, I had my uh, my friend on a rosebud. We're in a leader charge. She showed me this picture. She, this was, came from her grandma. That's a, a pounding stone. I wish we can I find those. And, and then the pounder. So uh, yeah, I would love to have one of those. Some somewhere. Maybe somebody will. They're about like this big. Yep. They were heavy. And then that pounder had like a, a ring around there, like a edge uh, curve cut inside, like so you could hang onto it like yep. that. I would love to so, get a hold of I would love to have it. But, you know, the disruption of the Missouri River, 
disrupted a lot of that yeah, because totally. because you know we think about cannibal it wasn't cannibal cannibal is because the water used to make cannibals mm -hmm. and then yeah. along the way even grandma Teresa used to say that she's like yeah a long time ago you'd be able to find those um rocks where you can pound mm -hmm. and they would kind of fix the the um rock to pound mm -hmm. you know was used in fact, on your on the sheet that I give you, there's the name of the rock itself and the pounder that Wilmer. Um, so you all have that. And that, whether I don't know about the people on Zoom, whether you'd be able to get that to them on yep. email or something. Yep. So <clears throat> but I thought email me. they made some for you guys who are going to do this. Um, let's see what else was I going to say. Um, what about oh the choke cherries? Oh choke cherries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, with the choke cherries, and then, and then, like I said, I make cherry patties. You know, really this one. <laughs> and um, where's our? I think we left it over here. Okay, excuse me. So, oh, do you have a picture? I sent you that picture of that KitchenAid grinder now that they could use to grind choke cherries. Yeah. You don't have to use one of these old yep. fashioned things, but this is what I used for years and years. Just, I mean, for 40 years I used this and uh, it worked fine. But uh, now they have a KitchenAid grinder that makes, that grinds choke cherries just beautifully. So I sent a picture of that to Jennifer and maybe she could send, it, send that out. But I'm also going to uh, talk to my uncle's sister. She's got one, um, one of those. And she, every time she would grind, she'd say, there's got to be a better way. Because <laughs> so it's like grinding yeah, and yeah, grinding. Yeah. And so anyway, she so I, put the I got these choke cherries, and then we're going to put them in that grinder and grind it through. And it'll get nice and thin. And then that's where you make the patties. And then you put them, you know, uh, you just put them. But I'm also going to make a, just give you some to take home with you. Just soak some some what's not. So I'll leave that here for now until we're actually going to do that. Correct? Yeah. Or did you want us to do that now? Huh? Did you want us to do that now or start or wait? Do you want to? Are you all good? Mm -hmm. um, because once I turn the recording off, it's just going to, they're just going to be able to watch you do okay. the whole well, process. I guess probably one of the things I should say is about, you know, the, the, the kind of things that we, the reason that we use um, choke cherries is choke cherries were uh, one of our first foods and so that's why you use them in ceremony and also used for paint we always use that the, the choke cherry color was we use for paint because it, it's a uh, I and mean, it stays on whatever it is that you put it on and <clears throat> so um that's what they the medicine people will ask one of other cultures uh or probably ask for other things um uh, but this is just what I know, what I've learned, and um, I've been shown by these people that I've named. <clears throat> and but I'm always willing to learn. And, and uh, my friend Elaine McLaughlin, she said that they often used uh, corn flour. Um, it's a it's a it's a corn, but it looks white. It's kind of a white color. And mm -hmm. got it. I think a lot of work with those also. Yeah. So, so, um, but I think there was a lot of trading. Uh, Carol Herrera, Carol Andrew Herrera told me, she said, you know, of course, the cultures never used corn. So I said, okay, I'll you know, make sure that they you know that. And that the cultures used that more. And that mm -hmm. uh, there was this, um, you know, when we did a, uh, making a relative, that's when we also used that corn. So, because it was, what is it to what I've learned is, um, Corn is like our sister with corn squash and beans. Yep, the three sisters. So, so, and that's all connection with the different tribes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there was there was a lot of connections. Uh, there were a lot of ways of of doing things that was really interconnected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, so because of, I had learned this for ceremony, this is this is just how I learned. So. Um, like I said, you may have other people who, in your life, grandmas, uh, aunties, uh, relatives, or, or people that have done this before that will 
tell you different ways of doing it. So whatever works for you that works for your family or your culture, your your tribe or your spiritual leaders is, is the way you do it. Um, but this is, I'm telling you, this is just a way that um, has worked um, very well for us. Um, and then, so and these are good gifts for the elders. They like. They, oh, they love it. Oh my gosh. Love, 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 love. I made some, <laughs> some elders, and yes, they just absolutely. I haven't had this for so long. It's oh, they'll just tell you stories. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yes. It's just like so. There's um. There's a lot of of. How can I say? Knowledge or history, belief systems, this all that surrounds this that we would have stories about, that people would mm -hmm. have stories about how. When, when I went to Mulbridge uh, to do a class last year, um, this one woman was telling me, you know, I had everybody take mm -hmm. turns of telling me this stuff and that meet. And she said, I haven't done this since I was a little girl with my grandma. She said, This sounds, this feels so good, you know. And she said, mm -hmm. That smells so good because I already baked the meat and everything, you know, and she was calling me. Of course, they all get something to take. They all have enough to take home with them so that they can take it to their relatives. Oh. So, and if there's any questions that you have, you can share those with um, Jennifer and maybe her and I can respond to those. And at the end of this class, you'll get an evaluation form. I truly appreciate the evaluations that I get because it helps me get better. And... Um, it helps me to be more expressive in things that maybe I wasn't clear on. Um, it uh, it just advances my understanding and, and ability to to communicate with you better. So I really appreciate um, everything that uh, I, I get in return from you is, is feedback. So we're moving to the next piece, and, and with this grinder, 